Coming up next, our Friday Focus. 13 soul-searching years in the making, a Bay Area cartoonist gives birth. And Channel 7's Steve Davis will show us his creation and the special partner who made it possible. It's Friday, and that means it's time for the Friday Focus. And our Friday Focus tonight is about cats, not the animals of the musical. It's about a man named Cats. Every once in a while, we hear about somebody who just stops short in midlife and says, that's it. I'm now going to do what I want to do. Steve Davis is here tonight with the story of a man who has done just that. Steve? Indeed. And you know, I think this is also a story with which you and I can identify on a number of levels. First of all, it's the story of two people wrestling with the questions that nag at all of us. Where is the world going and what's life all about anyhow? It also is a story that appears to be about a near-perfect mating. One of the mates being Carolyn Katz, the woman you see behind me, a Berkeley professional woman who works in management at the UC School of Optometry. The other is her husband, Jack, who is an artist and writer, a passionate, severely opinionated man for whom Carolyn has had to be a great find, largely because I suspect she's the only woman alive who could have lived with him over these past 13 years, which is an opinion I offer in all affection for Mr. Katz. And so between them both, they've accomplished something remarkable, completion of a 13-year obsession called The First Kingdom, an illustrated novel with a message. There had been no television, all right, and no motion pictures. And at Christmas time, uh, one day your father brought home this uh, terrific, uh, oh, maybe the size of this drawing board here, a big, thick package like that. And, uh, and then Christmas Day, you would tear the covers off and you'd see this big thing and it had a black cover on it. And all it said was, King Kong, a fully illustrated story. Believe me, that would be a treasure piece for the children. They would go into a universe. Well, I could draw and I could write. And um, if you just write, there are very few people that will pick up a book and even concern themselves with this kind of a thing. Let's say that I'm doing a head, see, and it's the head of a, um, oh, somebody who has developed a persona of um, high sophistication, and then his eyebrows, I might just raise them a little bit because he has to be arrogating all the time. There he goes, and he's got this nice little military hairdo. I might give him almost a patrician nose. And so, regardless of what the features look like, what is happening is you're getting an idea of where his head is at. The entire panel, the entire frame is in my mind. It's just a question of getting it down. This part of it, the mechanical part, is hideous. You mean of the actual setting it to paper? Look at the difference. Look at the fortunate difference the motion picture industry has, in a sense. Look what they can do. I have to build a super quintessence of a moment in one panel. See? What an opportunity they have. With musical background, they have their character walking down the hall with a long shot and he gets closer and closer to the doorway. The sweat is rolling down his face. The music is building to a climax. My heavens, they have a universe in their hands and what they have done with it. When Jack Katz first dropped Gershwin, Mahler, or one of his other favorite composers on the record player and sat down to draw the first kingdom, Vice President Spiro Agnew was resigning. The Watergate hearings were on television. The Vietnam War was ending, and a little-known singer named Bruce Springsteen released an album. Katz was to work 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days per week for months on end during those years. Work at a project most all his peers advised against. It was a project that we both believed in very much, so if, if I hadn't believed in it and understood what he was going through, um, it would have been very, very difficult. It was an incredible undertaking. Who knows how many lines around the world Jack has drawn, one scratch at a time. Why? I was determined to try to make some sense 
out of some of the horrors that I saw during my lifetime. Some of my friends who became the very thing that they hated, who became lost, seduced away from their original ambitions. And uh, I found myself going along with a lot of these things, wasting my life. At least here, with what I've done, I've tried to reason out as best I can what it is that I'm searching for. So the book represents Jack's own What's It All About Odyssey and also then seeks to pass on the answers that he's found during those 13 years of search and rumination. What have they done for income during that time? Have the books have been released, so he's made money in There's the been a bit from that, and of course Carolyn has been working uh, and has been uh, the support system mm -hmm. for the two of them, uh, as they would both acknowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then he has the luxury to continue. Yeah. Might yeah. say he's been sending those books to us for 13 years, too. As, yeah. as he completes them, he sends them to uh, people that he knows. And, and uh, the work has become more and more sophisticated. You can follow him through the years and see how much he's learned. Yeah. And okay. he didn't start uh, as a neophyte. Well, we're going to take a look because there's much more to tell about the Katz's creation. And after this break, Steve will focus closely on the First Kingdom, two dozen books from the primeval to the intergalactic. Lynn and Jack Katz, Steve Davis is here with <laughs> us. And continue, Steve. Great story. All right. We're talking about a man and a woman who have taken a big chance over the last 13 years, dedicating all that time to write and illustrate a huge, quote, comic book, end quote, one with a message. The book goes under the premise that it's possible that all of humanity has a great uh, reservoir of, uh, of love. The possibility is that I'm wrong. Most people might be born brutes. So what? you sat down to figure it out? Yes. For yourself? For myself. And I used the, nature, the construction of a comic book in an effort to do this because how much better to reach people now that are so visually oriented, but then by giving the best possible pictures I could, the greatest intensity and drama that I could, and telling what appears to be on the surface an adventure story. There are 24 books in the First Kingdom series, each leading to the next. The story begins at the end of a nuclear war and seeks to understand how it happened. The books are layered with plot over plot, in which individuals and whole civilizations struggle through thickets of human emotion and tortured conditioning from the tribal cave to the intergalactic enclave. Man may be greater than his conditioning. That business of our conditioning grows, in Cat's mind, out of the needs of the primitives to explain and protect themselves from the acts of indifferent nature, floods, fires, and the like, that seem to have been caused by unseen powers. They then developed a series of people, a set of people, who acted as intercessors, the, the hierophants or the priesthood, who would talk to the gods for them. And from there, Katz saddles his characters with dogma, religious or governmental, which squelch human goodness and personality. In the end, though, his people rediscover truth and emerge, having retained their symbolic beauty through it all. Why are your people nude? Because the body is very beautiful. And because, as one of the artists in my industry said, that the women could cook naked in a lumber camp and never get a second look, because they're not selling themselves, they, and the men aren't selling themselves, and it merely means that you can tell a very serious story using a great deal of poetry in art, as much as I can attain. Each little incidental accent that I put the body through suggests something about the characters. Those are the highlights. We couldn't begin to do justice to the drawings. You just have to see them for yourself in the books. And you can order those books, if you'd like, through Bud Plant, Inc. That's the publisher. Post Office Box, 1886 F4, Grass Valley, California. Or they can be purchased at the comics stores, if you would like. And again, that address on your screen will get them to you as well. You know, he said something there that, um, that struck me because I had wondered the question that you ask about why the nudity and mm -hmm. always the nudity, and yet when you look at those comic books, you don't see the nudity. It's not lascivious, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and it also gives Jack a chance to show off, frankly, because... He likes uh, to draw bodies. He loves uh, the work he does as an anatomist and yeah. is quite proud of that and, uh, and so has a chance to demonstrate it there. And it's true, you can draw clothes, but you can't get the body doing 
with its motions and stance and postures what you can without them. Suzanne, any <laughs> comment on nudity tonight? No, I was wondering whether or not he feels that he's gone through a catharsis having come to the end of the 24 books now. He insists he knew at the beginning what he was going to say and that he had to alter it a little bit along the way to keep it contemporary, but that's all. Okay.